What are your fears? What's something you're afraid of? Something you're afraid of. You personally. Huh. I guess afraid of living for a long time as an invalid. Yeah, and I think that probably is what everybody really is afraid of. You know, yeah, these days. Hmm? These days. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that's really something that's for our time. Yeah, yeah that's why I said it. Yeah. And, I, and that's the thing that does, uh, I'm, I'm ever, you know, it's because of uh, my experience with Seth, I'm not really afraid of death. I'm less afraid of death than living for a long time as an employee. Now, in terms of our times now, very confusing, isn't it? Extremely confusing. The financial picture really uh, is involved in almost everything. Krugman, the uh, Nobel Prize winner, uh, Prize winning economist, who writes a uh, op-ed uh, column for the New York Times, does one of his columns pretty much saying the same thing. But uh, basically it was that the the big one is yet to go. So, I mean, we live in a world like that. Not, we didn't live in a world growing up like, uh, like that. And then, then you have these disastrous type of uh, situations like the uh, oil, uh, oil leak in uh, Gulf of Mexico. I mean, that definitely becomes part of history. It's the biggest natural uh, disaster that we've ever experienced. There have been a few others, you know, uh, Exodus Maldon and uh, the um, big fires, you know, but nothing like this. So what do you think it's that. done to people? Has it, has it changed there? Excuse me? What do you think uh, the oil spill and the economy, the oil spill on top of people being so devastated, do you think people have lost faith and uh, there's all this big business kind of stuff. Well, I, 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 are angry I think at. so. I think pe I think a lot of people are, are losing faith. Uh, I voted for Obama, but um, in many ways I'm disappointed with, with Obama because he doesn't seem to take strong enough stands to uh, certain situations. And, uh, somewhat like uh, Jimmy Carter in a way. I like Jimmy Carter too, and but he also really didn't. Um, take very strong stands, and he has the bully pulpit to, um, to do so. What do you think? Well, <clears throat> the other recent thing was the that firing of, what was she, a Secretary of Agriculture? Uh, well, she worked for the Secretary, yeah. she worked in that office. And they fired her because she apparently said some inflammatory things in a speech. Well, she didn't. She didn't. Took it out of context. They took it out of context, and the government. The speech uh, was lovely. Yeah, the, speech was the government lovely. fired her. They didn't read the speech, and it was it was really very telling and disturbing because that wasn't a hard thing to do. Sometimes it's hard to understand the economy or hard to understand how to fix a spill, but it's not hard to read a speech and see what the real truth is. Anybody could do it. You could do it. I could do it. Shelley could do it. It's a matter of not checking the details. And then we find, we've heard recently, that there were people at um, British Petro Petroleum that had warned them months before that things were not good and that a spill could occur, and they disregarded that. In the whole economic meltdown, it was like the the emperor's new clothes. People were going on without really looking closely. A few people tried to warn, but they were shushed. And it was as if everybody was in a trance going forward with what seemed like something that would be profitable. They were all in a trance and they weren't checking details. Well, that is the scariest thing, especially when you have a very big system. I think it's getting to people. And I think if you ask about faith, I've not met, met a number of people now who are saying, I want to go and with any little bit that I have, become a farmer, find a little place and become a farmer. Because uh, 
the sense of the system is so big and unmanageable is getting to a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. So you ask that question. That was a long answer. But what are you? Answer. What are? What are you most afraid of in your life right now? What I'm afraid of is is something similar to Shelley, of being unable to cope. I think I could. I think I can manage almost anything if I have my wits and my health. I'm so I'm. If I were to ha know that I had my wits, and my health and my energy. Uh, you know, you never know what life will bring. So, you, you know, you're tossed here, there, the other thing, you know, you cope. But if you don't have your wits and you don't have your energy, then, you know, you feel like you're going to be trampled. You just as well do a final exit at that point. And that's what I'm most afraid of is, 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 is losing that. So, there. <laughs> yeah. I, be I better... Uh... You better get to work. Get to work. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, right now I'm, I'm doing a very, very big reorganization of my life. And uh, Marquetta is helping me do so. She's great at it. This has been going on for a long time. I have all my papers and books and little knickknacks. And they're all over the place. And whenever I, I, I sort of know everything is, it's... Uh, Disorgan disorganized, uh, organized disorganization really was what it is. But I um, don't want to look for things each time I'm looking, trying to write a paper or do something like that. What made you decide? I decided some time ago, just uh, as I, it was very difficult for me to, to throw out papers. Any, anything, oh, I haven't read, haven't read this paper yet. I can't, I, I copied it and I can't throw it out. And I found this. I can't throw this away because it reminds me of the time that uh, I was in Coney Island buying a frankfurter at Nathan's. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, silly things like that. But I, during the course of this organization, reorganization actually, I um, reorganization many times because I started on this uh, many times before. I um, decided I have to be much more aggressive about throwing things out because there are things. That I have saved to saved to be read, and that was like thirty years ago. So <laughs> let me go on. Yeah. Please do that. So that I mean, that seems to be a common problem. You see the, not that it's just yeah an awful problem, but you see the show hoarders, oh, and mean. they have these houses full of things, and it's just this idea that these things are meaningful. And mm -hmm. so, what makes you? hold on to those things and what makes you, uh, what changed to make you just, you well, know, because it's a personality type. Well, you it's... know, you know, the thing is, the hoarders are one thing, but for most of us, I know that m most of my memory is encoded outside of me. And so yeah. that, as Shelley is right, you, you look at something and it, it's like Proust and, and the Madeline. Yeah. You oh, look at something and it opens up a memory. You look at something else, you pick it up, you smell it. Another memory pops up. Yeah. I was very fearful. It's like thinking that you're going to get a lobotomy if you get rid of all this stuff because yeah. you won't have anything to remember. Absolutely. But I, I long ago came to the idea that if you took a picture of things, you would be able to reinstate the memory just as well as if you had the object, and it takes a lot less space. And now I can take a picture and put it on my computer, and that takes even less space. And and I feel unless there's a big meltdown on computers, my memory will be intact and when I want to go back and look at it, I can. But I can. I know how, how awful it is when you have something, you have something of somebody you love who's passed away and you say, I can't get rid of this sweater. Smell it, it you know, yeah. you can't get rid of it. It, is, it takes you there. But you can get rid of it, and, 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 and it won't be so bad if you, if you write it down or you take a picture. You can encode the memory that way. Only a few things that you need. Yeah. You know, I know in this very short period of time, we've really gotten into some very profound issues. Yeah, it's so usually how it happens over here. <laughs>